Hello, good evening. Welcome, guys, to your session number eight. Hello, Evelyn. Hello, Reina. How are you guys doing? Are you ready for today's session? Hello, can you listen? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. So, welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. We have our session number eight. Okay. Before I start the class, I would like to know if you have any questions about the midterm because today is actually, I don't know if uh, I think it was yesterday, the due date. So in case you have any uh, question about the midterm so we can go over before we get started. Not to in my case, I don't have questions. No questions, okay. I already finished the midterm. All right, thank you so much. So you already finished um, the midterm too, okay? So thank you so much. In case you have any question about the midterm, okay, just go ahead and ask it, okay? So welcome, this is session number uh, eight. And we are basically finishing a week number two today. Okay, uh, so since is what is four days per week, today is uh, second week. And uh, well, the expectation is that you have everything finished, right? Which is section one, two, and three plus the midterm. Right, so section three, uh, the topic we already know it, which is how uh, could you do me a favor? And we're going to uh, talk about how to make indirect questions and requests today. That's today's topic. And uh, well, this is the objective for this lesson. Uh, by the end of this class, you will learn indirect requests. So that's the main idea. And then I really want you to participate, ask questions if you have any, and try to add your examples on your own, okay? So this is the chart which provides the summary of uh, the structures that we are going to be studying, okay? And maybe you heard this on the, I don't know, on the website or on the platform. Indirect is when the person you are looking for or the person you wanna talk to is not, you know, present, it's not there. So you want to uh, send a message, but, you know, indirectly right with me with another person. So, so today we're gonna focus on these uh, options. We have statements, imperatives, uh, yes, no questions. And we also going to study WH questions, okay? Which are um, quite different, but we're gonna go over some details about it. So let's get started. I need um, Evelyn to please read the statement. This one, the one that I'm just highlighting and just, just like, Circling. Okay, Jeff, Tony is having a party. Thank you. So Tony is having a party. So the big question is how do we make it indirect? So that's it. And um, this is the way we need to use one structure. Could you tell, right? Could you tell? And then we have, uh, could you tell? And then the same sentence. Uh, could you tell Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party? So this, that right here, it becomes optional, but then um, you can say it or you cannot say it. Could you tell Jeff, Tony is having a party? It's understandable, but it is also suggested to use that when necessary. So using this structure, um, maybe think about where you are at this moment or any um, maybe indirect message you want to send to anybody, but the person is not present, is not there. How can you give one example? I know some of you already finished the midterm, so this topic must be maybe um, a little bit clearer on your, on your end. So let's start creating sentences with, could you tell? And then, um, Okay, Jeffrey, what do you have? Do you have any questions or any idea that you want to share with the class? I have a question, teacher. Uh, with this injury request, 
which is the most common between with that or without that? Without. Or without. Mm -hmm. When you are speaking without that, that is, that is actually, it becomes um, sometimes really repetitive when you use it. But when it's speaking, when you're writing, and you might want to add that or like most of the time. But then when it's speaking, yeah, could you tell Jeff and then boom, directly. You don't need to say that that. And then, yeah, speaking changes a little bit because that people use it. But then if you listen to American people speaking, they don't, they don't frequently use that. Like, would you tell Jeff and then at once the statement, okay? And that's it. Now, um, maybe any example that you want to, maybe today, based on today's uh, activities that you did in which you couldn't deliver a message directly that you would like to share with the class? You think, could you tell same structure? No, teacher, no, I don't know. no. No, we're, we're fine with this. Could you tell? And then I think just a matter of thinking what we want to add. Could you tell then somebody uh, this message? Could you tell um, like Reina, Evelyn, uh, Jose? And then you can say that, like, and then the statement. That's it, nothing to, to be, let's say, adding or removing. So basically that's a formula indirectly right uh, you're not saying it to the person okay and where we're gonna go deeper in this i just want to go over uh, you know, about this chap this uh chapter and uh, this image we have imperatives or imperatives and uh, we have a way to make this i would like to give some time for you to share with me some examples because it's not that common but it's really useful how to make this negative you know or these imperatives so Jeff, don't be late. And then uh, we want to say this to Jeff, but Jeff is not there. Maybe you are the boss, right? And then you want to say this to one of your employees, but this guy, girl, whoever it is, is not present, is not there. Then you want to say this, but you want you say it indirectly because he or she is not there. So. This is being late, but there are many other things. Maybe if you work in a company, if you are at school, if you're a teacher, if you're a manager, if you are uh, even a father or mother. So I want to give you some, some time for you to create one um, imperative indi indirect, okay? So how do you say it? And let's try to create imperatives with a negative uh, structure. That would be the, the, so we can follow this. Uh, use the chat, uh, create your own ones. If you're a father, think about any message you can give. If you are, a, I don't know, a boss in your job. So I'm going to give you two minutes for you to share the idea. Stick to the, to, to the formula, please. Let's take one more minute so I can start checking on your, your ideas.
Could you tell, and then uh, could you tell the employees to be on time tomorrow? Okay, this is an imperative, even though this imperative is uh, affirmative, right? Positive, but that's the formula. Yeah, I see your point. Can you tell Anna not to, yeah, that's the point, not to go to the party today, not to go to the party? Mm -hmm. Nice, I see more interaction today. I have, uh, well, can you tell Anna not to go to the party today? Can you tell Diego not to play inside the house? Okay, I see, good ones. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jose, can you tell your coworkers to be quiet, please? Okay, I see, I see, good one, I like this one. Can you tell my daughter and then to, to connect the idea, to keep quiet? Marcos, don't call while you are driving. Could you tell Marcos not to call, not to call uh, while he's driving? Yes. Could you tell, could you tell, or could you give me your, your um, cell phone number, please? This is very polite. Would you tell me, would you give me um, your cell phone number, please? Okay, that sounds more like a request, not like an imperative, but you know, the formula is to connect one uh, infinitive verb as the one they said right here, um, not to call, not to do this or to do that, okay? It's like making an imperative. Okay, um, well, this is just an, an overview idea, right? And what about, this is important. I wanna see how you guys create this one. Uh, let's think about just no questions. These are very, we can think about, uh, well, simple presence so we can, um, you know, create a sentences. Sophia, are you free on Friday? And then take a look at this one. We have, can you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? So what do you see here? We are changing the subject and the verb to be. So it makes sense. We're not gonna say, um, are you free on Friday? Because you want to ask somebody else. And then this is important guys. So we don't say, uh, could you ask Sophia, are you free on Friday? Mm -mm, because we're not asking her directly, we're asking her indirectly. That means that somebody else is gonna, is gonna do it for us. So um, I want to give uh, two or three minutes for on this area, this one. Uh, let's think about just no questions. And then we can come up with some examples. First of all, I will say, write it directly, right? And then you want to uh, convert it into direct form. The direct form is, are you free on Friday in this case? Are you free on Friday? But then since you're not asking Sophia, you're asking somebody else, then, then it, you know, it changes. So what, what idea comes to your mind? Imagine you want to invite someone out and then, but this person is not there and you see his or her brother or sister and then you ask, you know, indirectly, maybe not going out, you might be planning, you know, I don't know, maybe an event and you need to ask something specific, you know, to any, any member in, within your group but this person is not there, how you can ask it, you know, indirectly. So think about some of this example. And remember, you don't need to say it in this case in the question form. And this is extremely important. We have here that is, uh, well, we have, uh, she's free. You don't say, is she free? So it's, it's basically a statement form, no question form, because the question is stated by the modal verb. Okay, so what comes to your mind? I'm gonna give you two minutes on this one. Send your examples. Imagine you are a father and then uh, maybe 
Oh, you leave your kids uh, with your mother or with a babysitter. And then you want to ask, you know, if they have eaten. So how do you ask if they're not there? Or think about possible scenarios in which you can, you can do it, okay? All right, let's, uh, let me see. Now we're gonna have the cameras off, all of us. I think it's easier. <laughs> okay, so we have here, Joel says, Joel Pastran says, can you ask mom if she, if she has my camera? Mm -hmm. if she has my camera? Yeah. Uh, could you ask your sister whether or not she's interested in dating me? Okay. Can you ask Melvin if he's on track today? Yes. Well, I like it because we're given the, the structure we're looking for. And then something that I really want to point out here is that we have to have the second statement must be a statement um, like, like affirmative statement, not in question form. There's no inversion at all. And then whether, I like when we use weather because weather, guys, is, I would say, there is a slight difference between weather and if. And most of the time when we use weather is because we want to refer to specific situation or options. So that's basically what I can tell about weather. But then the rest is basically the same as if you're using if, very similar. And let me read your examples in here. Let me see what we have. And then in the structure we have here, whether or not we cannot use if, you see, this is a structure, whether when you wanna give options, so whether it comes, you know, becomes the best choice here. And then let me read some of your examples here. Let's see. Hmm. Can you ask Sandy if she has a gift for Andrea? Okay, yes. Maria, did you do your homework? Could you ask Maria whether or not she did her homework? Yes. Yeah, very good. You're using the structure. You don't say whether or not did she do, right? She did, all right? That's the way we do it in the in affirmative statement. And well, there are 12 people connected here. And if this is, if this is a topic, guys, you feel as if it's too easy, or why don't you share examples? You already got your 10 on the, on, the, um, on the platform. Okay, what's the case? I'm gonna give you three minutes for you to create example with whether or not or if, okay? Because I'm interested in reading your second part of this sentence. Be careful with this because it is necessary that you pay attention to how you write it down. So if you want to open your mic, you're more than welcome to do it. I'm gonna give you three minutes. So start doing it, please. Three minutes. What examples do you have? All right, I think we have some examples right here. Could you ask Luke if he is coming home this weekend? All right, we don't say uh, if is he coming, right? That is what I wanted to see, awesome. And then Angie says, could you ask Francisco if he's at the stadium? Right, mm -hmm. great, great. And then we have, would you ask Luke if he's coming home this weekend? All right. What else can you share with me? Any other example? Can you ask? What about whether or not? Mm -hmm. 
Can you ask your friend if he has activity for today? Okay, if he has, right? So that's basically the structure. And then how about the other ones? I'm gonna give you two more minutes and share your examples. I'm gonna give you guys some time for you to create it because I really want you to practice. I haven't heard you speak in the language. It's only me speaking. And I think this is really awkward when I'm speaking, uh, it's me speaking, you just, you know, uh, remain like sending your messages, which is not bad, but then I would love to hear you speak in the language, not, not me, myself and I. So, so um, I'm going to give you some time for you to create one scenario in which you're going to be using this structure. How? Well, easy. Think about maybe, just to give you an idea, right? Imagine you are not going to see your family, which is in the other, in another country, for example. And then, but your brother or sister is going to visit them. So how can you plan the conversation, you know, uh, on, this, on this topic? So you wanna maybe ask info, you know, about your family who's not with you at the moment. And the only mean you have is be uh, your brother because he, or she, he is going to see them. So, 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 that, so that's one idea. Maybe you can think about one other in, a, in your job, uh, in which you want to ask your uh, upper management anything, but then you, you cannot go as a group. You need to send somebody to do it for you. So how can you send this indirect message to your upper management? So there might be many scenarios in which you can use this structure. So I'm gonna give you some time in groups and start first of all thinking about which is in a scenario in which I can send indirect messages which is not gonna be directly from me to the other person. So think about that. Uh, please uh, take advantage of the time because we have some other examples and structures for today, like one by one. But I really want to hear you speak in the language, which I think is the most important on this, uh, this um, uh, what levels speaking all the time. But unfortunately on this level is a lot of grammar, right? so as you can see. And I know based on my experience, Teaching grammar is the boringest thing. I mean, the, is, is the most, whatever, uh, maybe tiring uh, topic we can have. I, I don't see anybody with the cameras on. This is, that's, I don't know, that tells me that you might be here or might not be here. So I'm gonna give you some time for you to use this grammar in context. Think about the scenario, try to use it as much as you can. And then I'm gonna bring you guys back to the main session and you're going to share it. Please um, take advantage of the time think about the scenario and use the structures, okay? Uh, so that's gonna be for the next uh, five minutes. So I'm gonna be creating the groups right now. Let's see for you to start thinking about it. And we are 12, so that means that I can make four groups. Hopefully you're gonna be like, all of you are gonna be participating, okay? So here we go. If you have any questions, raise your hand. I'm gonna be visiting you like within your, like if, within your mini rooms, here we go.
What are you talking about? What is the what is the it's, scenario? Uh, I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> I told Emma we can the person received. Yeah, I was thinking that we are free. For example, if I suppose that I made a phone call and I asked, how many Okay, thanks. Okay, Gustavo yeah. is asking me mm -hmm. if you can tell me or, or, or if you can tell him what is going to be the party. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that because I don't want to see Gustavo. Okay. I will and tell then... So So you can uh, make another question. Or, or in direct request uh, about me, I don't know.
love I love I love the vacation I love the vacation <laughs> Hey, Jessica, can you ask Daniel when he, when he, he come back to work? Okay. No, hello, Dad. Daniel, when okay. you when you come back to work on vacation of your vacation? Uh, I'll come back. I'll come back. Mm, let me. Let me see. Let me see. Francisco's friend. This meeting is okay. being recorded. Ya se acabó. You're set. You're set. You're set. Okay. All right. We're going to return then because I, the other guys are still working on the scenarios. Okay. Really hope you have your own one already. So. back so hello emma you you ready with your um ideas to be shared francisco you here melissa is back okay let's wait for the other ones to return so we can get started jose is back as well let's see jeffrey just arrived again so Who's missing? We are missing like two or three more people. So let's wait for one more minute or less and everybody will be back in a minute or less. All right, I think people are coming back. Thank you so much. I heard some cool ideas. I was um, listening to you and I want to hear you guys. And I can see we are, uh -huh. see also more you guys are, okay. Now everybody's back, right? So 11, good. So thank you so much for taking advantage of the time and practicing. I heard some good interactions and I want to hear them because I think I was able to hear some of them, but I know your partners didn't because they were on a different group. So let's start with Angie. So since Angie is there, I know she might have some ideas to share. So go ahead, Angie, with your team. Thank you so much for having your camera on as well. That's being present and that's, you know, that's the attitude. Go ahead, please. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, my, my team is with Emma and Francisco. Hi, Emma, I have bad news. I don't have a job right now. Do you know about some places are offered job? Hi, Andy. Well, yesterday I was reading the newspaper and I saw an offer job. And guess what? What? The boss of this company is Francisco's friend. Really? Could you ask him if if he have uh, an offer job for me? Sure, I will ask him. I will ask him. Let me think. Well, Francisco, can you ask your friend if he has the offer job yet, please? Okay, give me a second and I will ask to him if he has a position for Angie. Well, my friend told me that if, can you ask? Angie, she can, she's going to be able to receive an interview? Yes. Angie, can yes. you have an interview for the upper job? Really? That's a great news. Thank you. You're welcome and good luck. Thank you. Okay, teacher, that's it. See, I like it. You know, this is what I like. <laughs> this is this is lovely. 
Great ideas, you see. Thank you so much, Emma, Angie, and Francisco for thinking about this scenario. And that, that is the point, right? To use the, the ideas in a, in a context in which you are going to be using it like you know, on a daily basis. I just have a quick observation. I heard uh, somebody said, um, can you ask? And then it says, if, can you ask Angie? And then remember, this is like after if, since we have already stated that question, you say, uh, if you if you can ask, or if you, if you can do this, but no, but don't say if can you do that or can you do this because I heard that I heard that like be careful not to make a, a question in the second part of the of the sentence or 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 of the request because I heard that so. Whenever you state, can you do this if, and then the second statement, it has to be affirmative statement, no question for again. But then the rest guys went really well. I heard it, I heard the interaction, which is the one we're looking for. So that was really creative being honest. And thank you so much for that. We're gonna have uh, now the next group. I uh, would like to hear uh, maybe Joel's group, Joel. What do you have? What have you planned? Um, we don't really have a, a conversation, but we were talking about a party. So I was talking with Reina and Gustavo. Guys, are you there? Yes. Yeah. So we have to Im improvise something <laughs> right now. Okay. Um, Okay, let's start. Uh, hey, Joel, could you ask Reina where's going to be the party? Yes, I can do it. I'll do it right away. Reina, Gustavo is asking me if you know what is going to take place this party. Well, to be honest, I was wondering the same, and I will tell you if you could ask to him because I don't know. Okay, he really doesn't know, but no worries. I'm going to ask someone else in my in my contacts. Maybe someone else know what is going to take place this party. But can you ask Gustavo? Uh, can you ask Reina Gustavo if he is going to take someone to this party or if he's going to be alone? Okay, so Gustavo. Uh... I can ask you if you are going to go with someone to the party or are you going to go alone? Oh, I will go all alone. Okay, so Joel Gustavo is going to go by himself. Okay, I got it. That's totally bad. Okay, uh, Gustavo, could you ask Reina? Uh, whether or not she is taking her car to this place so we can get her right. Okay, I will ask I will ask her. Uh, hello, Reina. Uh, uh, are you going to the party in car or in bus or Uber, will you uh, give me a ride? Well, to... I'm going to go with a friend and he has car, so I can give you a ride for you and Joel. So see you there, guys. Thanks. Will you ask to your friend? <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. It I can do it. OK. And... That's all. Nice, improvising is good when you uh, really know the topic. So that was really good job, guys. Thank you so much. And I think you could, you could continue speaking, adding more ideas because uh, that scenario gives the opportunity for you to keep asking indirect questions, right? And uh, I have a quick question for you guys. When I say, can you ask uh, Reina where is going to be the party? What's the mistake in this one? Let me send it. Can you ask? 
Can you ask Reina where is going to be the body? Is it okay or do we have any mistake? I just send it on the chat. Can you ask Reina where is going to be the body? Was is it is it okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Angie. Is it if she uh, no, where where the party is? Oh, where is the party? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you ask Reina where is going to be the party, or what do we say? Where the party is going to be? Exactly. Very good. Also. Well, that's the one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. That's the one. And I heard that one, the one that I sent. So you just make sure you make it, you know, in uh, the, well, the, the indirect one is, can you ask? And then the second one is not a question. It's just, it's basically a statement. And also the verb ask, you don't necessarily say to. After ask, you don't say ask, ask to him, you say ask him. So basically the two is not necessary. You delete it from, you know, after it, you don't say it. And I also heard where someone else know where is going to take place again. So where someone else knows, okay, knows where, uh, where the party <laughs> is gonna take place. Because you say where is going to take place a party or something like that. I, I was listening to the subject at the end of the, of, the, of the question. So, and just be careful with the subject. Okay, don't leave it at the end because that, was, that won't sound natural. And the last one that I heard is, I can ask, I can ask you. Maybe uh, the one that, I, that you wanted to say is, can I ask you? But I can ask you doesn't sound okay. But I heard I can ask you. And then it's like uh, something needs to be changed. But then the rest was totally fine. And thank you so much for your participation. I know you were improvising. And that's, you know, the level you guys are, right? Speaking without uh, maybe thinking or um, planning. You know, that was that's the challenge. And thank you for, to, for taking it. We are going to listen to the last ones, I think. Or I don't know if there are two more groups or one more. I think we haven't heard um, maybe... Jefferson, yeah, Jefferson, you haven't, it's your group, please. My partner were Jose and Melissa. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello, Jose. Hi, Jefferson. Sorry, sorry, I will start again. Um, I will start the call, uh, uh, but with Melissa. Hello, Jose. Hello, your friend, sir. Uh, Melissa. <laughs> okay. Hi, Jose. Is Jeff in the office? No, no, he is not. Can I do something for you? Uh, yes, I need to talk to him. Will you tell him, call me back? Yes, I'm going to tell him that you call him. Okay, thank you. Jeff, where are you there? We lost Jeff. You need to appear at this moment. Sorry, yeah. teacher, I got confused. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. I confused my part, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Would you like to try again or that will be it? Huh? The silent, is it a no or is it a yes? No, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you want, I will try again. Uh, sorry, I was thinking that I am um, calling. Uh, Melissa was the receptionist and Jose was the boss. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, in this case, uh, I start calling, uh, hello, 
José. Mm. Uh -huh. <ríe> Bad Melissa said me José is not. Said to you. All right. Okay. Hmm. Stay there. <ríe> No, sorry, teacher. I, I got confused. All right. No, no problem. It's fine. I mean, it's totally okay. The point is to, to have some practice on this. I think there are some of you who haven't participated, but I'm not quite sure who are the ones. Uh, so, Melissa, Jose, and then Daniel. Have you participated, Daniel? Gustavo? Who, who hasn't participated? Everybody has participated. Hmm. You know what? You don't even want to say anything. All right. I have like 10 minutes and I want to go over the structures. Maybe we can leave it by the end of the class. Um, let's see. Well, this is what we have said. And then um, just listen to me. And if you have any question, in, interrupt me at any time. So once again, we have this formula. Okay. Could you tell me? And then could you tell him? Could you tell anybody the object, right? And then not, and then the infinitive is when we add the two to the verb, right? This is the one we have said already. Could you tell Jeff? Could you tell Angie? Could you tell Melissa? Could you tell Jose not to blah, 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 not to go, not to smoke, not to play, not to do that, not to, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that would be the formula. And this is the one we have already talked now. Uh, let's move on, more ideas. Then you're gonna help me out with some examples based on this. Let me see, then we move on. We have, uh, this is, uh, could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for that party? Okay, same way, right after the object, which in this case is Jeff receiving the action. And then we have the infinitive, to bring. If it is negative, not two, that's it. So this is basically what, what you have already shared. Let's move on, let's see. And what else do we have? One second, let's move on. Give me, just gonna erase this, okay. And then we have some other examples. Um, maybe could you tell Jeff, or could you tell Jeff to tell his friend that they are invited to the party? So in this case, we have uh, tell, Jeff to tell, right? This is totally okay. So I tell somebody to tell somebody else, okay? That's fine, okay? This is another structure that we can use. Don't feel as it is repetitive, just the way it is, it is said. What else? Let's see. Um, we also have this topic, which is weather. I wanted to uh, add some other ideas on this weather and if for indirect questions, okay? And these are the ones we have been given. Could you ask Jennifer if she has a date? So after uh, the object, we have if, and then we have the subject, right? If she has, the, then you don't say if she have, right? This is third person we have has. And now uh, whether, whether it has the same use as if, but then whether, like I said at the beginning, we can use it when we have uh, maybe choices or we want to refer to a specific thing because it's not common to say if we want to give choices like this one. Okay, would you ask Jennifer whether or not, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's the one. Now, uh, based on these ideas, uh, let's try to create some examples. What about with these two ones? Uh, I want you to open your mind and just try to uh, create your indirect uh, what, request. First one about Jennifer, do you have my number? Jennifer, do you want to go to the party with me? So how can you ask Jennifer uh, if Jennifer is not there with you? You want to ask somebody, maybe Jennifer's brother and you are talking to Jennifer's brother. So uh, give me some examples, please. Use if, use whether, use any structure. We have two minutes. One participation at least, please. Ask Jennifer if she has my number. Okay, I like it. Next one. Do you? 
What about the body? Imagine um, Jennifer is someone you are, I don't know, dating, trying to convince to go to a party, but then the only point of contact is your best friend. How can you ask it? The same way, right? Um, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Basically, we don't change that much. Can you ask Jennifer, or can you tell Jennifer if she wants to go, right? We apply the S to the verb wants to go to the party with me. Now, let's move on. What do we have? Some other ideas. And um, what about the WH questions, okay? And this is really important. Why is it important? Because we're using auxiliaries. And when we use an auxiliary, this disappears. This is really important that we pay attention so we don't make the mistake. Uh, well, Jeff, when does the party start? And then Sophia, what time should, should I pick you up? Now, how do we make indirect? Can you ask Jeff? when and then we don't use this the sub the auxiliary anymore it's not okay to use it because we don't need it and then since does is simple present we have to apply the letter s to the verb start so in this i want to give you two minutes and i want everyone to ask one x to add or to provide one example where we are using uh this type of wh questions and from direct to indirect, create one direct and then give me the indirect one, please. It can be any tense as a matter of fact, but if it is present like this one, it can be you know, a good idea. So let's take two minutes. I wanna read your ideas, guys. Imagine Angie is the only one who knows uh, where the money is. So how can you ask Angie if Angie is not there? Can you ask Angie where blah, blah, blah. Let me see, I think we have one example because we don't have much time. Can you ask Jose when F1 season starts? Okay, I like it. I don't know what F1 is now. I don't know, I, it's, I think it's serious, right? <laughs> but, all right, good example. Okay, let's move on. Four minutes. Uh, I want to add some other ideas. Let's see. Maybe you want to share your example as well on this next minute. Let's see. Look at this one. Where is the party? So how can we make it? Can you ask Jennifer where the party what do we say, where the party, or where, or do we say, can you ask Jennifer, where is the party? How do we make it in direct? Anybody? Let's see, can Tom, when is the exam day? Can you ask Tom when the exam day is exactly what say? Yeah, this is really important, guys, because the common mistake I hear is that we use is in the middle when we know this is not a question. It must go at the end, right, Jose? Like, can you ask my when uh, is the meeting? That, that, is, that is a mistake. Can you, and you ask my when um, the wedding is? We leave is at the end. Can you ask Jennifer where the party is? Very good. I like it, Evelyn. That's the one. Very good. And then uh, we have three more minutes. Remember, we need to leave. Uh, this is not a question in the second statement. It's just a simple statement. Can you, Carlos, what is Daniela's last name? Can you ask Carlos what, uh, what is, no. 
No, Jeffrey. Can you ask Carlos what Daniela's last name is? Leave is at the end because it's not a question. You're making the second one. This is important. I think we will not. We will need to double check this topic tomorrow. Um, take a look at this one. Uh, let's see what Natalia. Where is the is the uh, okay? So what is the what is indirect here? What is in there, right? Ask Natalia where the game is. Where the game is, exactly, exactly. So this is not another question we are asking, right? Very good. Um, so basically, and what about uh, this one we have here? Uh, Jennifer, what kind of drinks are you going to uh, have at the party? So what do we say here? Can you ask Angie where the money is exactly, Evelyn? What about this one? I think we're going to start with this tomorrow. Uh, please write these examples and then we're going to start with this tomorrow. And I want you to write me the, the examples. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about some slight differences between whether and if, which I consider is important to clarify. And then, um, well, as of now, guys, thank you so much for your uh, participation. And uh, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, teacher. Bye. Bye.